Welcome and thank you for joining. I'm Jason from GetUncommonResults.com. And today we have an absolute pleasure of having Josh Landon, co-founder of Warriors Heart, number one treatment center in the world today. But we're gonna be focusing on three things, three incredible, powerful tools that every entrepreneur should know. One, we're gonna be talking about fake happiness. What is it, the, the, that number one obstacle, that thing that's holding you back or that's preventing you from hitting that success and creating that fake happiness? On today's call, we're gonna dig a little bit deeper, find out what it is and how it's impacting your business so you can see it in you. Second, we're gonna talk about going from being that solo entrepreneur or having a job to running a business. And what does it take to make that transition? And most importantly, once you make that transition and you become the real business owner, the true leader, what is your real focus at that point? And that if you focus on this one area, this one group will have a massive impact in your business and continue to grow while you reach millions of people in that and make a difference in this world. So we'll be right back. Of course, for more videos like this, be sure to subscribe, like, and comment down below, and we'll be back to introduce you to Josh in just a moment. Welcome back. It's an understatement to say I've been really looking forward to sharing this interview with you all today. Uh, rather than take the thunder, though, I'd like to take a moment. Josh, would you mind introducing yourself, telling us about who you are, what you've done, uh, what your organization is? Thanks, Jason, for having me on the show. I'm out running around. I'm in San Antonio, Texas, and uh, pulled over to, to do this for you. So honored to, to be, be here with you. <laughs> a little bit about myself, uh, Josh Lannon, social entrepreneur, I mean, to build businesses with, uh, with purpose uh, and that address the social problem. Um, been in behavioral health field for, said, geez, almost 19 years. Uh, I own and operate drug and alcohol treatment centers and also a rich dad advisor uh, for social entrepreneurs. Yeah, I think that's one of the first ways we met was through your connection to the Rich Dad Group and Rich Dad Advisor Blair Singer. And I had the opportunity to read your book. You said it was social capitalism, correct? Correct. Yeah. And I know you've touched on with what you do with running a Warriors Treatment Center. I just I appreciate you being humble, but uh, it is, in fact, the number one treatment center in the world today for warriors in the veteran and warrior class. Am I correct? Yeah, it is. We exclusively serve uh, active military veterans and first responders. And that obviously wasn't where you started. Uh, obviously I have the advantage that I get to know your backstory a bit better, but do you mind just sharing a little bit about where you came from, uh, how it all started, that sort of idea so that the audience can relate with you? Yeah. Just kind of condense it down. We could probably spend an hour just starting to peel back some of the onions. I know all of us, you know, once we get in the story, we're pretty passionate about our, our past, uh, and whatnot. So oversimplify it used to run nightclubs in Las Vegas. My wife was a police officer. So the joke was I'd get him drunk, she'd book him in jail. You know, it was the revolving door. Uh, in 2001, my wife gave me the ultimatum, said either you go to rehab tonight or I'm gonna divorce you. Uh, that was a lifeline I needed. My life was out of control. I had a, a lot of what uh, is called, I call it fake happiness, you know, artificial happiness. I drank to feel happy. I spent money to feel happy. You know, I had a smile, but behind closed doors, I wasn't happy. So there was a number of things that uh, created this artificial happiness in my life, and drinking was one of them. So when she gave me the ultimate, I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm done being fake. I'm, uh, what we're doing is not working. Uh, so I took on uh, rehab, uh, came out of the program, decided that uh, I can no longer work in the nightclubs anymore. I didn't want to be a part of a problem. I wanted to be a part of a solution. So to help others uh, get sober as well. So we opened our first treatment center in 2002, built it to six locations, multiple states, ended up selling it to a private equity company, uh, took a little time off. And then that's when we re, uh, like repurposed or refocused, if you will, uh, and built Warrior's Heart. Uh, we've been doing that since 2015. We've served over, geez, a thousand warriors through our program. Uh, from detox, inpatient, it's a 42-day program, outpatient, and long-term sober living. And uh, for me, it's a very mission-driven, purpose-driven life that I'm on now, uh, much more different than the artificial fake happiness that it was fun, don't get me wrong, but uh, 
it, it wasn't fulfilling. And I can honestly say from my experience, well, one, first off, thank you for sharing your story. And uh, it's a powerful story. And like I said, we can go an hour just on that alone. Um, but on the other side, I know from my opportunity of meeting and getting to know you and Lisa, uh, you two are by far two of the most incredible entrepreneurs I've ever met absolutely brilliant and i love how you two balance each other out and complement each other in your skill sets and abilities and and strengths after this video i would highly recommend look more into them their, their involvement with rich dad and kim kiyosaki and robert kiyosaki uh, and any information you can get on because they are absolutely brilliant when it comes to the business side and i know you've been doing a lot of interviews and podcasts on that lately so lots of content out there for just for us and our viewers, if you were to give a piece of advice to an entrepreneur, maybe they're successful, maybe they're stumbling during the different challenges and times right now, what, what kind of advice would you give to a, the ones who have started, maybe failed a couple of times, have success under their belt, uh, but are hitting a bit of difficulty, hitting a few challenges right now? The first thing that comes up for me, because I'm in behavioral health field, is we look at, as Blair says, what's in between our, 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 our ears, right? That's, what's, that's the real story what's going on uh, with our little voice. And he says, what little voice? That little voice that just said, what little voice? That's the one we're talking about. So, so in behavior healthcare, look at what are you addicted to? And it, it sounds extreme, but what I mean by that is all of us are addicted to something. So a lot of times entrepreneurs can be addicted to money. Money is the high. Like, hey, if I make that sale, boom, I get a high. I get that endorphin rush in my body and the, the dopamines. And, uh, or if I'm successful in, in uh, closing a client or whatever it is or, or opening a new business. What, what I would say is that make your, your purpose bigger than money because money will come and go. We'll make money, we'll lose money. And if the business was built just to make money, you're setting yourself up for failure. Being a social entrepreneur, I recommend taking a look at building a business that creates fulfillment in your life, more than money. Because if it's just money, it's never enough. You get bigger toys, bigger houses, you spend more money, right? You just need more and more. It's like a drug addict uh, with their tolerance going up and up and up, or an alcoholic. One shot used to get me wasted when I was a kid. Then when I was full blown, it took me you know, half a bottle. You know, <laughs> it's kind of like inflation, right? Um, so that would be my recommendation is, is to build a business really that has a higher calling than money that fulfills your spirit. I don't think I've ever heard anybody say that or, or reference it to a business in, in reference to an addiction. But I get exactly what you're saying because I know a few people who they've hit millions of dollars, millions upon millions of dollars, uh, some of them even clients. And you get there and you think, wow, you have it all. But when in reality, you get to know them as a human being and they, their opinion would be they have nothing. Uh, they have, sure, they have money, but that's all they have. And everything else, is, everything else is what they crave. Is that kind of what you're talking about here? Yeah, and that's where personal development is so important. So you have business development and personal development. You need to elevate them at the same time. Because if I don't work on myself, but my business takes off because whatever, it's a popular product or service then I'm left with a, a sense of unfulfillment and the business is my drug. So when the business drops down, I have this lower sense of self-worth. I'm a loser, I'm terrible, you know, and we take it on personally. But if we elevate ourselves personally and professionally, businesses go up and down, but we hold that context. We hold uh, control, if you will, of the little voice in our head. Very, very well said. And I know we both study Buckminster Fuller, but what was coming to my mind is, is kind of what he was talking about, the professional effect and, and the focus on that mission. And if you focus on the mission and your purpose in life and your true calling, kind of like a bumblebee goes out and collects the nectar just to create the honey indirectly at that angle of 90 degrees, you have, um, you, you populates the earth and pollinates the earth. Don't get me wrong. When you first start out, man, money is important because you're mm -hmm. starving, right? Yeah. You, you know, you're, you're, living on breadcrumbs. I know I was eating top ramen and you know, all that stuff. So it's like, I could see an entrepreneur going, what the hell is he talking about? I can barely you know, make ends meet. Yeah. Is that don't focus on the money, focus on the purpose, focus on the mission, focus on your values. You know, and the money is that, what you call the 90 degree by, byproduct of it or the ripple effect yeah. that will come in result of you doing these other things.
you know, one thing you said when you said that, don't get me wrong, um, you, the money is important. The thought that got to my head is, like you said, the little voice, the thoughts between your, the mm -hmm. thoughts between your ears that are holding you back. There's uh, just as uh, just as there's just as many entrepreneurs who have achieved success and have money but still feel empty. There's just as right. many entrepreneurs on the flip side who are avoiding success because they have that subconscious belief of fear of money or fear of success. So, um, what I'm hearing from you, if if I'm hearing you correctly, is it's focus on the purpose, focus on the mission. Don't be afraid of the money. Don't be afraid of the sale. Don't be afraid of delivering and providing and serving. Um, but keep your focus on the bigger goal, which is the true fulfillment and the true reason behind what you do. There you go. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Is there any, uh, any final comments you'd like to share? On that piece, you know, when Lisa and I first started out, it was all about the client. Take care of the client, love the client, which is great um, as a small business owner. But as we, we grew, we have about 100 staff, um, no longer – and it sounds weird, no longer was a focus on taking care of the client. Mm -hmm. For me and Lisa, the focus became, we have to take care of our staff. We love our staff, we care our staff, we train for our staff, we take care of them, they will take care of our clients. So as the business grows, just have that awareness of when do you shift um, between, you know, yeah, you always still love your client, but there is a point in time when you shift and your focus is on developing leaders within your company that will take care of your clients. That's a brilliant point. And I instantly think of uh, something that you've showed me and I've seen through Robert Kiyosaki, his ESBI triangle. And I know we don't have enough time to jump into that, uh, that today, even though I would absolutely love to one day, because I know there's a lot of knowledge just in that little piece you said. But just to kind of summarize it, it's there's a shift in from going from a solopreneur that you focus on the product the client, the service you provide to as you grow to become a business owner, your shift goes from the product and the service to the people, to the team. You take care of them. They take care of the product and service. So you grow as the business grows. Is that what I was hearing? Yeah. And that's one of the indicators, if you will, they ask the question, well, do I have a small business? Do I have a big business? You know, Robert uses the definition 500 employees or more. Um, and that, that's, that is, that is true of big business. Um, and I look at it as like, well, where's my focus? Am I the one having to do the work? And there's nothing wrong with that because we all do. You know, we all have work to do. But at a certain point, you shift to my job is to take care of my team. Yeah. And when, when I, like for me, when I'm spending more time with my team than I do the actual client, that's when you know you have a business, you don't have a job. Well, thank you. I very much, as I mentioned, I appreciate your time. Um, for all you who are out there, I, without a doubt, consider Josh and his wife, Lisa, two of the most brilliant entrepreneurs I've ever met. Every chance I get to talk with you, and I'm very grateful for every time we get to work together and speak. Um, I always learn something new. So thank you for that, Josh. From the bottom of my heart, for all that you do, whether, whether it's with Warrior's Heart, whether it's with the, the team members, whether it's with fellow entrepreneurs, it's just, it's always powerful. And I really am extremely grateful for all that. And I know some of them are wondering, many probably are wondering, why is hard? Could you, could you tell me more about that? Or where could I find out more? Where would they go to learn more about that? Yeah, check out warriorsheart.com and then you can ping all the social media and, uh, uh, links from there. But we have a, a main website there that tells you who we are, what we do. Uh, we're all over social media. We do some fun videos. We have all kinds of cool stuff out there. Yeah, I know. I was noticing that from the foundation side, I know that I really like your tomahawks and the flags that you make. Those are really cool. Thank you. Perfect. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate time. And of course, for more videos just like this, we have lots of them coming. Josh, I don't know if you know this, but Tom actually did an interview, your co-founder and business partner. And his interview was all on picking the right partner. So you might actually enjoy that one, <laughs> along awesome. with a lot of other Rich Dad advisors and other successful entrepreneurs. So for more videos just like that one, be sure to subscribe. And of course, like and comment down below. Until the next video, we'll see you soon. Thank you.